Okay, so hello, I'm Rafał Pocztarski and today's talk will be Zik because full stack is no longer just JavaScript and TypeScript. Uh, okay, it, it will be a challenge for me because I usually, uh, no, I don't uh, talk very briefly. So some of you may know me from Stack Overflow and uh, I always tell you because I even uh, had situations in New York where people recognized my avatar because they knew me from Stack Overflow. It didn't recognize my face, so I always at my avatar to my slides. But that's enough about me. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, so, uh, in the 70s, 80s and 90s, we had some uh, quite a few programming languages uh, designed that are still in use today. Uh, but as you can see, uh, languages like C, C++, Perl, it's uh, 70s, 80s, Python, Ruby, Java, Perl, uh, it's like it's many decades old. Even Java and JavaScript is from 95. Uh, and but lately we had some uh, time that I uh, call the uh, Cambrian explosion of programming languages. Uh, there probably will be some also some extinction process uh, soon after. Uh, but um, in the last decade, we had some uh, decade and few years, we had some uh, interesting programming language developed like Rust, TypeScript, Zeek, Odin and WebAssembly, which is not really a language and it is not really about web and it is not really assembly. So the name is very confusing. It's more like a um, virtual machine and a bytecode standard. But this uh, development of WebAssembly uh, created some uh, interesting, um, interesting um, stage for other programming languages. And um, one of the reasons that uh, some particular kind of programming languages is particularly suited for, uh, for WebAssembly is that because WebAssembly currently doesn't have garbage collector, uh, it is still in development for many years. But because of that, uh, it's much easier to compile to WebAssembly languages that doesn't use a garbage collector. So mostly uh, uh, lower level languages with manual memory um, management or automatic memory management like in Rust, but without actually a, a standard garbage collector. Uh, also, there is uh, some from that uh, a timeline of technologies that are more um, more familiar to us here uh, is uh, Node, TypeScript, yes, Node, Deno, and Bun. It's very uh, Bun is actually another uh, JavaScript and TypeScript runtime. I was talking about it uh, on the previous Warsaw JS and Lightning talk, so we can probably find it. Uh, on the YouTube channel of Warsaw JS to uh, to see some uh, to get some more information. But what is interesting about Ban is that it is actually written in Zig. So like uh, Node has been written in C++, uh, Deno has been written in Rust, and Ban has been written in Zig. Uh, I have previously showed some popularity that the Ban already has. I will not go through it very thoroughly right now. Uh, the slides will be available online and at the end well, there will be URL so uh, you will be able to get some more information. But what's interesting is that uh, Zeek has actually quite a nice popularity. I am comparing it to Rust and to Odin because those are languages that um, I think can be compared. Those are rel relatively recent languages, relatively modern systems programming language, low level um, programming is, uh, is possible. Zeek is um, not, of course, not so popular as Rust, but quite um, quite a bit more popular than Odin. Um, so, uh, on my previous lightning talk, I was talking about some programming languages and uh, people actually liked the emojis that I um, associated with them. So, uh, and I was actually uh, telling everyone to learn other programming languages than only JavaScript and TypeScript that is mostly in use today on front-end and back-end development for full, st full stack developers. Uh, I think C is very important to know even though it is not very uh, convenient to use. C++, I have some opinions about it and 
Um, I don't maybe recommend it to learn as uh, first programming language right now. And uh, I think that for a lot of use cases that C++ was traditionally being used uh, right now, Rust is, is very nice. And for, uh, for use cases where previously C was the first language of choice, I think that Zeek is currently getting some tractions right now. So like R Rust is something like the next C++, then Zeek could be described as the next C. So it's lower level, um, lighter language, um, uh, but it's uh, it's actually very nice. I will uh, see. I will show some uh, some features uh, in a moment. Of course, uh, this uh, is from the, my list of languages that everyone should really know. Of course, JavaScript and TypeScript, but also Scheme, Haskell, Smalltalk, Erlang. Some more, some some less known languages. I think that uh, it's nice to know um, at least some basic uh, syntax of those languages to. Uh, to be able to compare it to, uh, to for example, JavaScript. And uh, I think that knowing languages like Smalltalk or, or Haskell, uh, uh, you can be really a better JavaScript programmer because you will be exposed to some other paradigms, to some other techniques, and you will be able to use some of them actually in JavaScript or TypeScript. Of course, assembly, brainfuck, lambda calculus that I consider to be really a programming language. And uh, even on uh, on code wars, you can actually use some of the tasks uh, written directly in lambda calculus. So I also always recommend it and knowing it, uh, you can actually uh, learn some nice tricks in functional programming. But going to Zig. Uh, the website of the Zig language is ziglang.org. Th those are links that will be clickable on the slides where you uh, go to the uh, URL at the end, so I will not go through it um, very thoroughly, but uh, the Zig show is very nice podcast. Zig Learn is a very good place to start. Uh, what is Zig? So some of the, uh, the main, um, main tagline of Zig is that it is a simple language. So you can focus on debugging your application rather than debugging your programming language knowledge. Some of the programming languages have uh, really very uh, complex syntax like C++ or Perl. So uh, the syntax alone is, is very, uh, very difficult to learn. And uh, even if you learn some subset of the syntax that you can uh, write your programs in, then you will inevitably see some other programmers' programs that use another subset, so we will eventually really have to know the entire syntax. So this uh, language is very simple by design. It has no hidden control flow. So if you see, uh, for example, in JavaScript, we know that uh, even something like accessing a property of an object can really invoke some function because we can have some, uh, you know, some uh, properties that are um, like some getters, setters that are um, really invoked when you access a property. So in, in, in some cases, just writing x equals a dot b can really throw an exception and it is not apparent from just looking at the, at the code. This is, uh, you will not find something like this in Zeek. So only things that look like a function call will really be a function call. All other things will not uh, invoke a function call, so uh, reading the, um, the code is, uh, is, is easier. No hidden memory allocations, which is also important because, for example, in JavaScript, uh, we, there are some kinds of uh, exceptions that we cannot really catch. So, uh, for example, like we get out of memory. Uh, and, uh, and it can happen any time when you um, uh, set some property of an object and uh, uh, and the runtime needs to allocate some memory it can fail but we cannot do and really anything about it and actually a lot of languages it cannot handle um going out of memory so it's it's very uh, it, it's not common for for programming languages to be able to really do it here there are no hidden memory allocation actually you can do it in c but it's it has some more problems but every time you use malloc, you can really check if it, uh, if it failed uh, and do something about it. Uh, but in languages, especially with automatic memory uh, allocations like JavaScript, you cannot really do anything about it. So Zig is um, a 
allows you to handle those exceptions. So uh, it can be uh, your, your programs can be um, uh, can be um, can handle certain errors that most of the other programming languages cannot handle. There is no preprocessor and no macros. So anyone who is writing in C knows that uh, preprocessor is really like a different language and it's like you are writing in two languages. Uh, first is the preprocessor language and another is C. Those two languages don't really know about anything about themselves. So uh, you can like define something like uh, unbalanced parenthes parenthesis. So uh, I've seen a program that uh, started, the C program that started with hash define begin, uh, open uh, curly brace and hash define end close curly brace and programs later uh, looked like Pascal. So uh, you didn't use really curly braces, but use uh, begin and end. And it is very hard for IDEs and for uh, static analysis because uh, really you cannot uh, know what uh, even the syntax is without knowing everything that you have included, uh, all the header files that you include in C. This is by design, there is no preprocessor pre in Zeek or in no macros at all. There are also no exceptions. Uh, so uh, we are used to, um, to try and catch um, using standard uh, like style, like in, in C++, Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, that we are catching errors, catching exceptions, we are throwing exceptions, we are using try, catch, and this is like another control flow different from returns from the functions. Uh, here, uh, there is nothing like this. You just return errors from functions, like you return values, but actually um, code that is using those functions cannot ignore those errors. So it's impossible to just, uh, for example, in C, uh, if anyone was writing in C, then you know that you can pretty much ignore every error and um, not check it. But here, uh, you cannot do it. I will show some exemption in a few seconds. Uh, there is comp time keyword, and uh, it means that pretty much every code you can um, tell the compiler to run at the comp uh, compilation time instead of a runtime. Uh, so this is something that uh, because of that you don't really need a preprocessor because you can do a lot of um, work that you need to, to do some setup at the beginning with the comp time keyword. There is zig build built in, um, no pun intended, that uh, is a build system so you don't need a make or uh, you don't need make files, you don't need um, like auto tools and all of the tool chains that you usually need to build a project. Uh, and Zeek actually is um, uh, is um, provided as a single binary, so it has built-in build system. Uh, it is actually also a C and C++ compiler, so uh, you can use it to compile C and C++ or to just um, use uh, some of the and it actually has the function called ABI compatible with C. So you don't need to write in even any boilerplate to use C libraries or to write, um, uh, to use from the C to call your Zeek code from C or vice versa. Uh, also, it has cross compilation out of the box. So anyone who has ever done cross compilation knows how, what a pain it is to, to set up cross compilation. You need to install all of the tool chain, compilers, make uh, ev ev pretty much everything uh, with the specific versions to cross compilation. It is, there are conflicts with your main tool set. Here, cross compilation is out of the box. So on every, uh, every host, you can build for every target. This like, it's just uh, like nothing. It's, uh, it's a very convenient thing that uh, you can, for example, build, I don't know, on the Mac OS, you can build a Windows binary or Linux binary or anything like this. So this is how the syntax look like. Uh, for anyone, this is like a C style language like we are used to today in Rust, C, C++, Java, JavaScript. So this is no very, it's not very unusual. Uh, and um, this is an example of Hello World. Um, the print is actually, uh, it's by design, it's, uh, it's not just print because you can, uh, you can choose uh, the um, buffering, the, um, what, what it should do if, 
for example, the file descriptor is closed, etc. But th this is just a simple example. You import uh, the standard library and you just use it, like you would in, in most of the uh, current programming languages. Uh, you have built-in test uh, runner in Zeek, so you don't need to install something like Jest or, 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 or something like this. And it is it has actually quite a nice uh, quite a nice syntax. You can put those tests directly inside of your code, and later you can run it. Here we can see some example of the types that it supports. Like U16 is like unsigned integer. Uh, also, if we see is also an expression instead of just a statement. So it returns actually a value. So you can uh, increment the X here by either one or, or two, depending on the value of A. Of course, we need to see the Fibonacci sequence uh, because this is very important sequences. We, we couldn't be able to, uh, you know, estimate our tasks in Jira without Fibonacci sequence. So it's very important. Uh, and here we see some recursion and also test directly um, following the function. You can just put those tests directly to in, inside uh, your code and then uh, running Zeek test, it will just run it. Uh, so I, I said that there's, there are no exceptions and uh, here the failing function is uh, shows that it could either return an error of type oops because you always uh, can say which kind of errors it uh, it can return uh, or void. So the function is void uh, in a context that it doesn't return any non-error value, uh, but you, uh, and you, as you can see, you just return the error. So there's no magic like throw um, a syntax or something like this. And the test actually shows also how you can catch the error. So you just run the function and following the catch um, keyword, uh, this is, it looks pretty much like in Ruby, um, Lambda function, uh, you just test the error, what, uh, what is the type of the error, and you can just um, run it like this. And also, it's important to know that uh, the compiler will not let you uh, run the failing function without actually checking for the error, because it is annotated that it can return an error, so you just cannot ignore it. Of course, you can ignore it explicitly, but you cannot just forget about it. So I think that I uh, probably uh, didn't um, cross my time, uh, but maybe there is some time for, for questions. There is a special microphone that's un unbreakable. Okay, hi, great talk. So uh, my takeaway is that Zig is a, a shot at the next C-like language, right? Yes, yes. So, uh, have you heard about Carbon? Sorry? Have you heard about Carbon? Uh, yes, I've heard about Carbon. Uh, it's more to, uh, to uh, display C++ uh, than C. So, it, it, it is actually developed by some ex-developers from the C++ committee. Um, and it's very, very early and, but Actually, what I've heard about it, I don't see what uh, what is the good use case for carbon that you wouldn't use Rust for, for example, which is more mature at this point. And um, um, so, but I think that Zeek is low level, lower level language than both uh, carbon and uh, and Rust. Uh, so it's more like to um, to you know replace C than to replace C plus plus like carbon is targeted at. Okay, thanks. Hi, good talk, thank you. Um, so Rust, I've seen many build tools written in Rust. It has a lot of community stuff like that. Can you name another project like Bun that is written in Zig, which is popular right now? Uh, actually, I, I cannot because uh, it's, uh, I think that it is just getting traction. It, it is not even a 1.0 version right now. Uh, so. Um, I was actually quite surprised about Ban uh, that uh, it was written in Zeek and it, it works well. At, at, at least it seems to work well. But I think that it is um, it is very early stage of, of development of, on Zeek. It already has uh, quite a few years and um, it is, I think, a solid syntax. Uh, but uh, uh, but there are 
not that I know of about uh, some software that is popular. Rust is, of course, very popular, especially in the WebAssembly uh, uh, web uh, environment. Um, but uh, I think that for early adopters, this is a very good time to start uh, writing in Zig because, uh, for example, there are no, no libraries, so uh, everything is needed. So we can just write some libraries, write, write some code, uh, help with the development of the core language, and um, I always like to like get involved in very early stages of uh, of uh, tools like that, like like was in, with, with Node or Deno. Uh, I think that the first stages of the languages are most interesting. Uh, but of course, it is not yet much major enough that uh, there's a lot of software written in Zig. But I think that it is already ready to write some some software. I don't think that the syntax will change very a lot probably probably it will not change at all uh, the syntax as i said is very simple it's by design the entire grammar is like 500 lines uh, and um, uh, like a formal grammar defined for the language so i don't think that the uh, syntax itself will change but of course there will be probably more uh, standard libraries and uh, and and tools but it is not major yet but i think that it is major enough to to uh, for a good, so that is a good time to get interested about it you mentioned you had on your slides that uh, it's c and c++ compiler do you know how it's how it's possible is this gcc fork or something like this and second question have you tried zig in the battle so what is the more if you tried it like on pro no, no, maybe not production, but uh, what's the most most complex acts you, uh, uh, application you have written in Zeek? Thank you. I, don't, I think that the time is going uh, over. I, we will be able to talk afterwards, of course. Okay. Uh, so, um, actually, the idea that uh, the creator of Zeek um, uh, had at the beginning was to fix C. Uh, so he actually came out from C and tried to fix the problems that he had writing in C and started by removing features like C uh, preprocessor, uh, like defines, uh, like um, a, a lot of features. And uh, he found out that removing the features actually improved the language because it got simpler uh, and simpler mechanism like the comp time keyword uh, could be used to uh, instead of the all the, of the preprocessor. Uh, so, uh, and actually, probably, as far as I know, the uh, beginning was, it, it includes the C and C++ compiler because it uses uh, it internally. Um, and so the idea was that um, you, you can, because to, you need to, you need it to uh, include the C libraries, you need to compile the header files, etc. So one of the ideas was to just export it uh, at the um, uh, comment line level, so you just and use it as a compiler because it in, it is included already. Uh, one last question uh, from Jejuk Programuje uh, from YouTube comments. Uh, so why front-end developers should know that language? Uh, and yes, and the answer is WebAssembly. Uh, because um, front-end uh, can uh, front-end developers can already use WebAssembly. And there are already languages that are uh, compiled to WebAssembly. Traditionally, it was uh, the beginning was C, uh, C++, Rust. There is also as assembly script. Uh, so, uh, currently, the only languages that can be efficiently compiled to WebAssembly are those that do not use garbage collector. So, Rust, C, C++, uh, and Zeek. So, it, it is a very good low-level programming language that it can be efficiently compiled to WebAssembly out of the box, actually. So uh, in the context, uh, WebAssembly is the answer why front-end developers should uh, should really learn uh, those low-level languages, not not only Zeek, but Zeek included. Wow, fantastic. You did a great job.